my name is Steve Wilbark. I'm here today with Randy Lampropoulos. He has a YouTube channel called Randy Zoo. And I'm here to see what his thoughts are, what his purpose of his channel is today. Let me welcome him. He's right here. Welcome to my face. So we're here to interview his face today. We wanted to see, you know, a little bit of bit background information on him. You know, what find out what Randy's all about. So how are you today, Randy? Doing pretty good. Good it's to hear. Good today. to hear. So, tell us a little about your background, where you come from, oh, what uh, what history do you have, work experience type stuff, anything to be relevant to you know what's going on in today's society. Well, uh, up before I woke up, was uh, was just a carpenter and an electrician, and uh, ended up doing these large federal commercial jobs as superintendent project manager and ended up in uh, Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. So you were basically just average American working class type guy. Clueless. Clueless. <laughs> Clueless. Yeah. Just going along with the flow and uh, then 9-11 happened and I didn't like what I saw and it just didn't make a lot of sense. I have a pretty strong scientific background I believe. And at least strong enough to understand when things don't look right. And that's when I just started getting my head out of the clouds and uh, starting to research stuff and find out what's going on. You know, you always hear these things about, you know, these conspiracy theories mm -hmm. and everything like that. And you start looking into them and some of them go nowhere and some of them start making you ask even more questions. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, garbage out there that you have to filter through, and most of your average people can't tell the difference. What's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's false. Yeah, a majority of it out there is false. Yeah. It's just people playing games. They think they're funny, or they want to act like they know something, or they're special, or some secret agent or something. <laughs> yeah, it definitely seems like an age of misinformation. Yeah. All right, so as we were, so why did you decide to do this with the YouTube channel, and what's your intention? What are you looking to? Well, for a long get time, uh, I've always, you know, since I woke up, I've been secretive with my ways, I guess, and my life and stuff, trying to at least the best I can, even though it's next to impossible. And I stayed away from Facebook because it's a spy tool developed by DARPA to get you to spy on yourself and give you them all you, the information they ever want or mm, wish for. Yeah, like the bowl, Joel. Put all your personal information on here. Your personal pic, show what you have, right? <laughs> Facial personal recognition, uh, who your friends are, mm -hmm. all that stuff is all compiled and collected and stored. And I didn't want any part of that because I was like, man, one day they could do something to me. Yeah. And pick anything out in your past that, you know, they say, show me the man, I'll show you the crime. Nope, create a crime. Yeah. But, uh, so I decided one day, uh, since time is getting short from what I understand, uh, to start speaking up. Because if I don't speak up, then I'm part of the problem. Gotcha. What, what, is there a major event or anything? I think you already led into that, but it sounds like 9-11 was really your turning point. Yeah, especially, you know, when the, our government tells us after a major attack that our best bet is to go shopping. Mm. That's a red flag right there. Like, don't pay any attention to what's going on. Just go back about your lives. We'll handle it. Don't you worry about it. And that was a red flag. Some of the physics involved with the attack are a red flag. Um, and... Every, everything since then, you know, you find out things when you start digging, you know, like how they pre-planned to go into five countries in, in five years and mm -hmm. take them over. And this was before 9-11. Then you have the... So what countries would be the Afghanistan, Iraq. Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Egypt, Libya, and Syria. All, all, basically all the Middle Eastern countries that aren't under the thumb of the cabal, we'll call So, I have to ask, what's your, what's your purpose? What's your, what do you 
What are you trying to achieve with this channel? Self-preservation. Because if everyone's not ready and they're just a bunch of clueless people, that's detrimental to me and my family just sure. as much as anyone. Oh, so. and I we stand type of yeah. thought. Because, you know, it's like whack-a-mole. You know, you've got somebody standing up over here, they get smacked down or disappeared or something, anything. You know, Absolutely. discredited, character assassinations. Uh, so you have to get everyone together. I mean, look how effective they are with the riots. they got everyone stepping up and, and going out there. And rather a small group. Yeah, yeah, and it's a small group. But yet over here with people that love their country and want to keep it, Everyone's so individualized, they can't come together and find common ground and work together to solve the problem. And what I'm trying to do with my channel is to light a fire under their ass, like, hey, wake up, uh, we've got a lot of things going on, and, and it's all right under our nose. It's, it's not like they're really hiding it, yeah. you know, but people are in la la land. So I want to wake them up, get them prepared. Because if they're not prepared, they're going to be a drain. You know, people that, they're, they're, these are the people that will show up at a refugee camp that puts a drain on an entire country trying to take care of them because they can't take care of themselves. Trying to help people understand how to take care of themselves, how to take care of their family, how to protect them, how to identify what's happening to them and uh, start working together. That way, they're not a hindrance, and they're a positive in the efforts to normalize things again. Gotcha. You want to sidestep for a minute on something that's happening that's current. It's relevant, irrelevant, but part of, partly relevant. So, there's a lot of talk about racism in our country and how bad it is. Yeah. Any thoughts on it? You feel we're racist? Do you feel that it's blown out of proportion? What's your thoughts? Just in general, just looking to see, get a little more insight into it. I think racism in itself is a part of everyone to some degree. Everyone because we are all different yeah. in some sense. That doesn't mean necessarily. And even if we were all the same color, mm -hmm. society would find some differences to exploit, no matter what it is. They'd find something else to divide us right, on. Right. And division is the key... You know, divide and conquer. Yeah. You know, you keep people divided, they're weaker, they can't fight you off because they're fighting each other. And I don't think we're racist in the sense that they're pushing it as a society. I mean, we grew up in the 80s and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we thought at that, or at least I thought at that time, that racism was going into the dustbin of history. Cause yeah. people Even were way back when, 20 other. years ago, right? Yeah. Yes. People were cool with each other. Yeah. Nobody thought about racism. As a matter of fact, they went out of their way to make the other people that are different than them feel more comfortable yeah. on their own. There was no edicts or mandates or anything saying, you have to do things this way to make sure they feel okay. You did it naturally, you know, yeah. and it was nice. Yeah. And you know. But you're right, you're right. I mean, even if you got rid of skin color, yeah. right? There's, there's always, always going to be differences. Someone's going to, you know... And Someone's again, I just lay people out of other, liking somebody or not liking somebody. It doesn't work that way. It never did. Right. Now, if we go with what, you know, Martin Luther King was saying, you judge a person by the content of the character. Absolutely. That's it. it and, but they want to reject that because that solves the problem of racism. And they don't want that problem solved because mm -hmm. all ruling factions thrive and are in desperate need of division. That's the only way they can stay relevant, really. Yeah, whether it's strong or whether it's some sort of crisis, basically. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. And war has always been the health of the state. Same with division. Division is always the health of the state because they leading their people around by the nose and telling them that the other side is out to get them or they have it better than they do and it's or whatever problems they're having over here is the other side's fault. And it, like I said, if, if it wasn't a color issue, it would be something else. You know, like it is with left versus right. I mean, that's a paradigm outside the realm of racism. Yeah. 
So if you're on the left or you're on the right, and that's a totally made up thing too. Yeah. So you're divided that way. Then you're yeah. divided by color. Well, think then about you're divided the by divisions. religion. Then you're divided by, yeah. so now you have big pieces that have been chopped and diced into very small pieces, right. which aren't divided. as strong. They got people divided between yeah. genders, between yeah. color, between religion, between father and son, you know, kids and their parents. Yeah. You know what side of the tracks they live on you know it, it just doesn't matter what class they're in you know financial status yeah, all that yeah, stuff yeah. you know it's it can't be just these people are cool and these people are assholes it, it can't be that yeah. because that's too simple so it's got to be complex so that the average person is confused because their their whole focus is just going about their daily life and they interject this stuff to make you have to deal with it. And if you, if you don't bite, they're going to make you bite somehow by creating the circumstances for them to point to, to say, see, there it is, it exists. Yeah. So now that's, you know, all of a sudden 2020, it's, you know, racism is the biggest thing going on. I mean, I know it's, it seems like it's been building up in the past few years towards us. We also have, you know, Coronavirus, yeah, you know, the impeachment. Supposedly, our president's inclusion with Russia. Um, God, there's a myriad of whole things going on, like everywhere, right? Yeah. I think that's relevant to maybe the election. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. because it's this stuff sometimes. doesn't happen in a vacuum. You know, the, there's always a lead up to something, and, and they're always playing games around election time, but. I mean, if you if you think about they since we're not in a dictatorship, they can't just tell us how to live mm -hmm. and tell us who to vote for, or tell us what to eat, tell yeah. us you well, know, freedom, all right? Right. Right. freedom to vote so, for who we want to, and the only freedom way to go where we want, yeah. live how we want, however it may be. And the only way around that is to use the power of persuasion. So that is, you have to persuade someone in a democracy to vote for their candidate. So if regular persuasion doesn't sell itself, your platform doesn't sell itself, mm -hmm. you start making shit up. And what's the best motivator? What's one of the best motivators to... Well, just to get you, the perception of, of consent to what they are doing. So if you vote for them, you've consented to everything that they're about to do. Yeah, but how would you get consent if someone didn't agree with you? What, what kind you, of motives you, would you You use? either trick them, mm -hmm. shame them, you know, shame them into it. That, that's a good yeah, see thing. a lot of, you see yeah. a lot of shaming and, yeah. yeah. Call your names, you're racist if, if you don't agree. Um, you know, just all, all the isms and everything. Fear. Fear? Oh yeah, yeah right. definitely fear is one of the favorite tools that they use uh, to just to get you to go along. It's all about hearts and minds and the control of your mind and what you think. And they do it with propaganda. And in a lot of my videos I point out the tools that they use to deliver that propaganda. Yeah, there's... Um couple things I've seen on TV, news reports. Now, I've, I've read the whole article, full contents of a couple things. I'm not going to get any details of one in particular because we're just going to speak more general. But I've seen, <coughs> I'll see something on the news and I'll, I'll see half the story. I'll see a lot of admittance in a lot of it. What's that guy? What's that? Why wouldn't they just tell you the whole story? Well, if they told you the whole story, you wouldn't be thinking the way they want you to. So what they do is kind of like rat poison. Rat poison is 98% real food. Yeah. The other 2% is the poison they stick in there. So a lot of the stuff they do tell you, like in these news organizations, it's true and verifiable. You know, you can see someone speaking, you can see the scene and everything like that, but they add this little bit of nuance to it that kind of changes how you perceive what they are telling you about the truth so they can be looking up at the sky and it's blue but they want you to believe it's green and they'll ever so slightly 
talk to you in such a way where there's have you convinced that there is a tint of green therefore we were right in what we were saying you can't really notice it too well but if you really dive into it it's green you know and they could convince people almost of anything unless they understand how psychological warfare works and who's behind it I mean you can't just take one branch of a tree and look at it to where uh, here's the media they're saying this I mean you also got to understand who's behind the media who owns the media who is directing them to do it who are they affiliated with and why are all these other entities saying the same thing are they connected uh, these are things you have to research and find out because if you don't research and find out you're always going to be speculating there's always going to be people that can uh, muddy up the waters it's called poisoning the well with these conspiracy theories that may, are so ridiculous on its face that it it discredits everything they've connected it to you know and they came up with the conspiracy theory word wording back in the JFK assassination because a lot of people were asking questions, obvious questions, and they would be, uh, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Discredit the people that are actually looking in the right direction. But like, don't look at him, he's an idiot. You know? Yeah, because the, the whole back to the admittance thing, to me, that's lying. If you're not going to tell me the whole truth of the story, you're going to try to steer me in a direction I'd be lying to. I, and I think that's wrong. That's wrong for the American people. That's just, and it always cracks me up, you know, like with Trump, how they were saying, uh, how everyone was hating Trump because he supposedly was colluding with the Russians. Yeah. But yet, when it comes out, all these other reports, the IG report, the Mueller report, the FISA court itself, the House Intelligence Committee material, and the Senate material, all that stuff comes out and you find out Trump was clean. He was not working with the Russians whatsoever. There was no connections there and nothing to point to. You got this whole group of people who still listens to the media thinking they're still mad at Trump. It's like, why aren't you mad at the ones lying to your face? They yeah. just got caught lying. Why aren't you mad at them? But you keep running back to them and get more information that you're going to hop on the next beer, smear. Because in their mind, they've already been brainwashed, in a sense, to, no matter what, the enemy is the enemy. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other side is the enemy, so there's nothing good that can come from them. It's all evil. Even if, you know, they do something good, yeah. they're always going to try and spin it in a way to take away from that yeah. goodness and turn it into something that's bad. Yeah, well, if you don't like someone, it's always someone to talk shit about them. It's always easy to believe it. You're like, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's terrible. Because you're already in that mode, and you want you want to believe it because, you know, the guy's a jerk. Okay. Yeah, I want to believe that he's also a child molester too. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Just because yeah. Fuck he's him. that much of a jerk, <laughs> yeah. I could believe it. In fact, I want it to be true so I can discredit him even more yeah. or attack yeah. him and just on another own hate. Exactly, a justification yeah. for the hate. Yeah, absolutely. So let's we'll move on forward. Let's go on to the. Um, we touched a little bit on it. Intention of the videos you're making. You know, you, you said, hey, you know. I want to bring everybody up with me so I'm not standing alone when shit hits the fan, basically, right? But not only that, it's our birthright as Americans to have that lifestyle, to be the alpha in your own home, to be the king of your castle, to be the head of your family, to be as self-sufficient as you can, self-reliant, because in a free country, the government is not supposed to be running your life. You are. And it's sink or swim in some instances, which makes you try harder, too. Yeah. You're free to succeed, but you're free to fail. Absolutely. But our founders intended this country to be full of men who were 
like that, yeah. uh, who are citizen soldiers capable of being a force unto themselves, and when they come together as a force in commonality, things get done. But it's meant for honest, hard-working, um, freedom-loving people Absolutely. with morals. And now we don't have that. So this system that was designed for that, and then you get the people of Walmart, uh, half the country, mm -hmm. it starts to fall apart. And then you get these people that don't want to grow up, and they want to be taken care of. You know, and that's it, where it I was about the to whole thing. go with that. It feels like, you know, we're supposed to have freedom government. It's not supposed to govern us. We're supposed to run our government. Right. It feels like a lot of people feel like the government is there to decide what we do and oversee us and take care of they us. But that's not really how it's right. supposed to be, right? Right, exactly. They're not supposed to be our authority. Yeah. They're supposed to be our tool. They're supposed to be servants. They're supposed to be our people, right? Our people are... Yeah. Yeah. Like if me, you, and my wife got together and had an idea mm -hmm. and we want to present it to the government you know we wouldn't all three go Bill we choose one person all right only one of us needs to go and explain so you Absolutely. are our voice the three of us you you are talking to us not just you and that's what our representatives have turned into they have an agenda and you are saying yes or no on that agenda it's like it's supposed to be the people's agenda, and this guy's just their spokesperson. They're not even supposed to be a leader. They're supposed to be a follower and, and a spokesperson yeah, for yeah. the people that are there. They're not supposed to do what their agenda is. Right, They're supposed exactly. to do what our party, agenda is. for that matter. What our agenda is, yeah, right? Exactly. What the people's agenda, who their governor is over. Right? Yeah, and then what happens is you end up with parties, and they end up doing the agenda of the party and not with the people. They're just using the people as their excuse to yeah. do their agenda. Look, hey, they voted for us. It's all good. You know, and, and it's tougher than hell to try to get them back out of there yeah. once they yeah. start, you know, giving you the middle finger saying, I'm going to do what I want. You elected me. Yeah, yeah. It's like... Well, you know, I'll use a quote you said. So people are that can't fight City Hall, right? Yeah. Can't That's fight not how it works, hall, right? right? You put the people in City Hall, they're supposed to... You should be able Make to take that better out. for us. That's Absolutely. why ultimately we have the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. So when they thumb their nose at us for one final time, where it's the straw that broke the camel's back, and it's like we've had enough, a long train of abuses, as it says in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, we have a right to forcefully remove these people and start over again. That's why they want to get rid of the guns. Because gotcha. they know we hold that power and we have a right to use it. And if they weren't intending on doing things that would get them shot, they wouldn't be going after the guns. Yeah, that's true. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's, I think, the biggest thing. Now, we get to the big picture of things, there's a lot more going on than just these scoundrels that we have running around loose in our governments, local governments, our state governments, our uh, national government. These people are working for party, both on the Republican side and the Democrat side. So when you have all these people that are just polarized partisans, mm -hmm. they're going to fight for their side no matter what. Because I can't be seen to be involved in the other side. This is what they stand for. Uh, yeah, I can't yeah. possibly stand for that. Rather than finding common ground, they keep driving the wedge further, saying, well, they do this, and they do that. Yeah, Instead of saying, of, hey, we got something in common over here, at least. Let's start there. Would be the smart thing to do. But people are so polarized and angry, and the media is one of the biggest faults of all that, because... They're connected to party, and they want to keep... There's a reason why they keep the third parties out of these debates. Because they end up asking legitimate questions or, or saying things they can't control. Yeah. And with all that, it's, you know, regardless of right or wrong, I'm going to stand my position because I have to stand that position now. Yeah. Whether even, if, I, even if I think wrong. it's wrong. Yeah, even if they're wrong. I mean, look how like these people on the left, they they so sure that Trump colluded with the Russians. 
that they can't find a thing even yeah. after almost four years. They can't <laughs> step off of that and admit that it was a lie. Their side lied about it. We're trying to illegally coup the president because they had an agenda going, 16 year plan of what they wanted to do to this country, which was get rid of it. You know, slowly so that it looked like it was just happenstance yeah, and yeah. just the way the world works rather than them actually doing it. That's why they got so upset and wanted to get rid of Trump right away because it took them decades to get to where they were. They've been at it for a long time. The Bushes, the Clintons, oh, yeah. Obama, you know, going way back to... Uh, Jimmy Carter and all those other people. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. It's been a constant battle, and people haven't seen it because it was mostly behind the scenes. But now, thanks to Trump, a lot of people are starting to see what some of us that have seen already, but you, you try to point it out to someone, and they're saturated with a media that they thought was telling them, you know, at, at least a modicum of truth. Yeah. So they get credibility. Yeah. I mean, uh, day one, the first day Trump was inaugurated, they said they were going to impeach him. They didn't even say what they were going to impeach him for. They were just, yeah. you saw the intent. It was just one. malice. It appeared to be malice to me. I mean, you don't impeach somebody for nothing. Right. Just right? because he's not the guy you wanted. So anyway, the officer said, well, I'm going to find a black guy and I'm going to friggin' arrest him. Well, for what? Well, I'll find something. Exactly. You know, it's like, well, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. So why is that not wrong? Because it's Trump and everybody hates him, right? Well, not everybody, but they would like you to think everybody hates him, it seems. But. I mean, they, they felt that they had it nailed down to where they chose the president, which they did for a long time. Yeah. They yeah. gave us our choices. It's like, yeah. and Pepsi we or Coke. At, right. <laughs> and then you see what happened to Ron Paul. The same th tactics were used on Ron Paul that were used on Trump and Ross Perot yeah. to yeah, get yeah. to discredit them, make them look kooky. Oh, how dare you defend the Constitution? Basically, yeah. he's a kook. It doesn't work <laughs> like that anymore. You know, yeah. they did not want someone who they did not control in there. And Ron Paul was one. We saw the same smears. He's a misogynist. Mm -hmm. He's a racist, and you know all, all the, it's the same things that they called Trump. Go back and Except he didn't hang on long enough because he was yeah. too much of a gentleman and wasn't a nasty fighter like Trump is. Yeah. And that's why Trump, they're mm -hmm. still trying to get rid of him. They can't understand why it didn't work. I mean, even the Republican Party was the one that did most of the dirt on on Ron Paul to get him out of there. Yeah. His yeah. own party didn't yeah. want him. Yeah, and that should tell everyone that they don't care about what you have to say, it's about what they have to say and convincing you to go along with it. That's all it is. That's all it is. You're farm animals, just farm yep. animals, and, that, and that's all there is. And not supposed to be. It's worldwide. All the governments, they all in on it, they're all, you know, that's why they've all at the same time turned their, their powers in the world, their spy powers, their you know, subterfuge and tomfoolery and everything, they've turned them inwards against their own per people. So they're all in cahoots. They've all agreed to betray their own people yeah. and remove their power and turn them into slaves for this new world order. Unbelievable. Let's take a moment here. 